I decided to create Chez Gaston because I wanted to do a French restaurant which is affordable and a little bit like grandma style, more home cooking. Um, but uh, in Malaysia, the French restaurants were more a little bit fine dining and all this, which is uh, not what I wanted to share with the people. I wanted really to share um, how is French food as, you, as we eat it every day or nearly every day in France, like whenever your mom is cooking or your grandma is cooking or your, hus uh, your husband or your wife is cooking. So that's what I wanted to create more than something fine dining and or uh, something that would be suitable for a Malaysian market. I wanted more to create something like they can discover how we eat in our own home in France. Well, there is actually a bit more education on French cuisine in Malaysia than it was actually six or seven years ago. But still, there is a long way to go, definitely. Uh, yet the people are responsive, the, the, the Malaysians are responsive. So, um, you know, they really like the food, even though they are not sure, they don't know yet. For some, definitely need to improve there on how to share and how to get people to try the French food. That's why I do have affordable set lunches on weekends and weekdays, which is a kind of starter pack or first step into French food without, you know, having to spend in foie gras and a bit more expensive premium items. So if you are not sure about French cuisine or whatsoever, you would come and you would spend a 30 or 50 ringgit on a three course menu, so we can, which can give you actually an affordable price for you to a little bit of taste for your first experience. I definitely plan this year. I do have my normal menu, um, but I'm also working on a soft copy menu whereby you would have the name of the dish the explanation, the picture, and a little bit of uh, history or kind of things, so people can actually just uh, scan the QR code of the menu itself, and then they will have this access to the soft copy of this menu with pictures and all that. That's how I'm intending to help out people who are not very familiar with French food. Uh, after that, we are also working often with the um, French Embassy or Bou de France when there is some uh, French events to be represented as well. So, you know, slowly but surely, we will definitely uh, well, we know more and more about French food, I'm sure, no worries with that. But for me, someone who is true foodie would be someone who is very adventurous in his choice of... Uh, I'm a very adventurous, I, I like to try uh, many things and some stuff new and some stuff weird as well. So someone who is foodie would be that someone who is very adventurous in his food to try something new. Actually, when I cook food or I create a menu, I'm not doing anything out of much out of the box means I'm doing very traditional French food. And when I create a menu or this or that, I actually just think about what I really love and what I really miss from France because I'm only going back to France like every four or five years. So I know what I want, I know what I like and I know how to make it. So I will definitely share this great food and what I'm missing from France, I will definitely share with the, with the customers. That's how I create menu usually. Obviously, I will always retain customer's opinion because I have a lot of regulars and, uh, and they do have their specialty dishes that they want me to keep on the menu. But then if I have to change a few items, I will just think like, okay, what do I want to eat and what do I love? Very, very difficult because, uh, because it's difficult to know what dish you prefer. I would, judging by my size, you already know that I love many, many dishes, okay? But then I'm less a dessert person, even though I like dessert, I would rather finish with um, cheese. I'm more a savory person. I am prefer more the meat and especially the cold cuts and the pâtés. These are my favorite, would be my favorite dishes. Otherwise, a really, really good piece of steak. Charolais beef in France, which is delicious. So an entrecote, a ribeye or something like this uh, would be very good to me. I really love andouillette also, but it's very difficult to get in Malaysia. Whatever with cheese and uh, cold cuts will go for me. Like I have the raclette on the menu, I just love it. Pretty much everything actually I really like. 
Okay, fine dining and uh, and then uh, more traditional food which wins. I don't think there is a winner here. I do believe that uh, some people must keep the authenticity and the uh, heritage and what we used to do before because this is the authentic of what used to be done and, 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 and that's why actually French cooking and French cuisine has been uh, traveling around the world and is one of uh, the best cuisine in the world without being too, um, I don't want to sound arrogant, but, uh, but then French cuisine is very well known around the world. So I think we should keep uh, both actually uh, the authenticity and, and, uh, and, and the traditional, traditional French food but uh, it doesn't mean that fine dining is not good. It's just fine dining is just experiencing uh, a new way with new products and all that. Uh, so it's the future. Um, eventually, it's uh, it's actually more art than the, the French uh, authentic food. So I think both are totally different. And I wouldn't say one is better than the others. It depends on what experience you really want to have. If you are looking for, um, uh, for the true taste of uh, French cuisine, you should go to a traditional. If you are looking for an experience uh, in terms of uh, visual and uh, a totally different kind of combination of tastes and everything than the, the, the normal standard things, then you should go for fine dining, I guess.